He doesn't fight crime or wear a cape. He doesn't read minds or levitate. But every time my world needs saving, he's my Superman. Some folks don't believe in heroes, cause they haven't met my dad. He loves his workshop and rock and roll. He's got a hot rod and a heart of gold. And you could say he's a man of few words, but he talks a lot within. And even though I'm a little taller, I still look up to him. He built me a house in the arms of a tree. He taught me to drive and to fight and to dream. When he looks in my eyes, I hope he can see that my dad's a hero to me. Rust ridden fender. Doors full of dings. Somehow he can fix about anything. I didn't think he knew how to cry till our dog died that year. He doesn't always say I love you, but I can hear him loud and clear. He built me a house in the arms of a tree. He taught me to drive and to fight. Dad's a hero to me. My dad's a hero to me. My dad's a hero to me. Hello, hello, Cathedral of Faith. Good morning, everybody. I'm here with my youngest daughter, Zara, and we want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. Yeah, can we applaud the fathers this morning? You know, Zara, I want to I read you scripture. Ephesians chapter 6, it says, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. And then it continues. It says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a process, promise. It doesn't end there. It continues. Are you ready? It says, if you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. And you will have a long life on earth. Yeah, dad. But it also says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Hello, somebody. But you know, there's kids, it doesn't end there, Zara. The same scripture says, rather bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Right? Can we give Jesus a hand this morning? But honestly, I'm so blessed with all my children and we're going to worship the Lord with uh, as families. And maybe if your father is not here, there is a heavenly father who loves us so much. So are we ready to honor the Lord, to worship Him, and get into the presence of the Lord? Let's go, Cathedral. God bless you this morning. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Because it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Let's all sing it together, come on. I'm not gonna live by what 
you believe that nothing is impossible for those who will believe if you feel comfortable to do so let's everyone just extend our hands toward the heavens God we believe that in you all things are possible Lord I pray Lord that as we stand here in this moment together that you would unite our hearts and our faith in you today to believe for the impossible God, I pray, Lord, that signs and wonders would show up in this place. I pray that miracles would be performed in people's lives here today. Lord, I believe that you're going to move mountains in our life today. I, God, I pray that you're going to reconcile, you're going to heal, you're going to restore. All things are possible, God. May we see and believe not with what we see with our eyes and hear with our ears, but, Lord, by what thus saith the Lord to us. God, we stand in agreement and we declare that you, with you, all things are possible. And in the mighty name of Jesus, all God's people said, amen and amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Put your hands together. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough then you came along and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied Oh, come on, everybody, as loud as you can. Come on, say it. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid.
Oh, Lord, we give you honor and glory and praise. Thank you. Thank you for this day that you've blessed us with. God is good, Cathedral, and all the time. Wow, we've come today to celebrate the goodness of God and to give him thanks for who he is and all that he's done. And wait, there's no better way to celebrate than to come to the waters of baptism. And we'd like to do that right now, that all heaven rejoices at this moment. And so we rejoice in heaven and earth when someone becomes a follower of Jesus Christ. And when it comes to what we believe here at Cathedral of Faith, we always affirm that at our times of baptism. I invite you to join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. Would you say it with me? Can we bring that up? Everyone, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. Can somebody say amen to that? He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, Veronica, let me ask you a question. Have you put your faith and trust in Jesus? You've surrendered your life to him. Upon that confession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, down with the old and up with the new. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, Cathedral, it's so good to see everybody. Whether you're here outside in the amphitheater, those in the parking lot, you know, inside the building, those who are watching online. Cathedral of Faith is a place where everybody's welcome, where nobody's perfect where the love is lived out and where absolutely anything is because we serve an amazing God. So before you're seated, look at someone and tell them our God is amazing. Our God is amazing. Amen. Our God is amazing. Amen. Well, happy Father's Day. Let's hear it for our dads. Well, it wouldn't be Father's Day without a dad joke. Knock, knock. Israel. Israel, good to see you. Israel, good to see you here. Israel, good to see you on campus. Israel, good to see you online. It's great to have you here with us. What a great week we just had together as the family of God here at Cathedral of Faith. Last night, we had a paint night, and many of our family members gathered for a special moment in which they made masterpieces. You can see them all displaying their beautiful trees there. Thanks to Angie Holmes for teaching and Pastor Cedric for organizing. It was a great night together, and they all took home a masterpiece of a beautiful tree to hang on their home to remind them of the blessings of God. Well, speaking of botany, knock, knock. Knock, knock. Divine. Jesus is divine and we are the branches. Well, also yesterday, we were able to host lots of people from our community who came together to celebrate Safe Park. Safe Park is a ministry we're part of where people who are homeless living in their cars have a place to come and park safely overnight. We have people who come out and greet them and give them snacks and encourage them. And yesterday, Pastor Yus, Pastor Robert, our youth, they ministered to them and blessed them physically and spiritually with all kinds of blessings. Thank you to all of you, yes. Thank you to all of you who were part of that ministry, helping greet them and bless them and give them a safe place. God has faithfully used you to make a big difference. Well, knock, knock. Cherub. 
cheer up. Things are going to get better. So here's the next one. Coming up soon, Stars and Strides is a race, walk, run that's going to happen on July 2nd. And we as a church family are encouraging you to be cathedral strong. In fact, if you sign up today for the race following service, you get a free dad's root beer. Woo! Plus also some cookies. I encourage you to go out and check with Carl after service in the amphitheater. We'd love to have you be part of it. In fact, every Saturday morning from 9 to 10.30, we're doing training. Yesterday, there were a bunch of us out here as Pastor Amal trained us on how to be in shape. We have all kinds of walkers and runners, people with canes. You know, it's, it's for you no matter what your fitness level is. So come out and join us this Saturday night to prepare for the, the walk run the following week. It's going to be a great time for us to bless our community as the proceeds from the race go to help bless frontline workers here in Santa Clara County. Well, knock, knock. Yeah. Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah, prayer for you every day. And speaking of answered prayers, I want to invite Pastor Ken, Pastor Mike, and Bishop E.C. Wilson to come join me here on the platform. Yeah, how exciting. Again, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming out today. And I've got a, a wonderful announcement to make. God sees ahead and he provides. You know, a lot of people are leaving California, but you know who's not leaving California? God. That's right. God hasn't left the Bay Area either. And God continues to work. And God has brought us a new Reaching Out director. As you know, Reaching Out is an amazing ministry that God's raised up here at Cathedral of Faith. During the pandemic, they were giving out $40 million worth of food every year. And we have been brought somebody, God has brought someone to us that is just an amazing man. Uh, E.C. Wilson has over 40 years of ministry experience. He's been pastor at four different churches. He's a, a tenured professor at a theological school. He's a bishop in the denomination that he serves. And most importantly, he's Shelly Wilson's husband. <laughs> <laughs> And he's got two wonderful children, and he is coming to join our team at Cathedral of Faith to lead our reaching out ministry. Would you give it up for Pastor E.C.? And I'm going to invite you to stand with me wherever you're at, and if you would extend your hands, Pastor Mike is going to come and lead us in prayer. But let's pray that God's blessing and favor would be upon EC so that we can continue to make a difference for God's kingdom in our community. Pastor EC, I put a rich anointing upon you from the top of your head unto the sole of your feet. I anoint you with God's peace, that peace that passes all understanding. I anoint you with God's prosperity, that you shall be blessed when you go out and when you come in, that everywhere you set the sole of your feet, the Lord shall be with you. I pray for your family, and I anoint that family to have joy, you and your son, your daughter, and your wife. Yes. Yeah. And I believe in something that was taught to us here at Cathedral of Faith. When I look at you, this is what we were taught. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Amen. Come on, church. Yes. Like yes. You're going to love, if you don't know EC yet, you're going to love getting a chance to get acquainted with him. Uh, he'll be preaching in a couple weeks. His son is going to sing on that same day, going to father-son tag team it. And so, again, it's so great to have you on, on the team, EC. Uh, you could be seated. And uh, now we have, well, we have a bishop, we have a doctor, and then we have me. And I kind of balance it all out, right? Some really smart guys here. Dr. Wayne, lead us in the offering. And we have the best with Pastor Kid. Amen? Amen. How fun. Well, talk about a great provision. E Pastor E.C., Bishop E.C. is such a great friend to Cathedral, to all of us, and we're looking forward to what God has. God provides. Amen? Amen. Well, knock, knock. Yeah. Noah. Noah. Do you know what's the next? It's the offering. Yeah. <laughs> 
So there are many ways that you can be part of God's blessing and provision by bringing your tithes and offerings to the Lord. You can go online, you can go to our website, you can text the number on the screen. The ushers have envelopes they can give to you and they'll be receiving the offering at the end of service. And all of our friends online, it's so great to have you. You can do all the online options or write out a check and mail it to us or drop it by the church office during the week. We're looking forward to God's continued provision so that we can be a blessing to this community. Knock, knock. Armageddon. Armageddon. Armageddon tired to knock, knock jokes. (laughs) Knock, knock. Saul. That's all for now. Well, God wants to speak to us in a great way this weekend and to prepare our hearts and to build our faith. It's a great privilege to have Jessica Johnson coming to seem brave. Let's welcome her as she comes. never told me this would be easy but I never knew that it could be this hard all the worry the worry the worry is weighing on me could you help me bring down all these question marks and make me Intensity, his toughness is showing off tonight. Azili catches and finishes. Golden State can start their celebration. And it's over. The championship is back in the bay for the first time in 40 years. Man, what we had to do to earn you, boy. Ah, what a unique day this is. Yeah. 
How about that? Everyone stand with me, please. We are so blessed to have a very special guest. You just saw him in action as part of the Golden State Warriors. Festus Azili was born in Nigeria and moved to the United States when he was 14 years old. He received 27 scholarship offers from Division I schools to come and play basketball. You know how many that is? That's 27 more than I received, hello. <laughs> he ended up choosing Vanderbilt, was a first round draft pick of the Golden State Warriors, and he ended up winning the championship with the team in 2015. Something that they've got used to doing since then. Now, you know, most of all, Festus, he's just a great human being and a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. And he's spending Father's Day with us. Would you give him a great big San Jose welcome to the Cathedral of Faith, Festus Azili. <laughs> hey, buddy. Everybody say Warriors. Warriors. Everybody say Warriors. Yeah, y'all ready for this parade tomorrow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. You can be seated. Oh, well, that, you know, that brings us to really before we talk about your story, tell us what was Thursday night like Ooh. at the game? I was in Boston and surrounded by a lot of green. <laughs> and as you guys know, I'm now a part of the media, right? I'm doing the sports commentary for the Warriors now. I've been doing that since halfway through the season. And as part of the media, I have to sit in the press box. And I got to sit there, and I can't support any team. I have to be unbiased as part of the media. So every time Steph Curry hits the shot, I'm like, mm. <laughs> And then Draymond starts playing well. Finally, I'm like, mm. okay. <laughs> And it was just... It was incredible. You know, for me, obviously, I came here, I got to the Bay Area uh, 10 years ago, and I was drafted with Draymond, and we started this journey together, all as young guys. I, you know, it's weird now, because everybody's a father, everybody's, like, older, and, yeah. but we started this journey as young guys, and we just had this belief and this faith in our, in our team and ourselves, and we said we wanted to go win a championship. At the time, we didn't know what it entailed. We just said, we want to go do this great thing, like everybody says. And back then under Mark Jackson and now under Steve Kerr and to see the growth of this team, mm. see the growth of the guys, understanding what Steph went through, understanding what Clay has been through, understanding what Jordan Poole, Draymond, Andrew Wiggins, Otto Port, like this team is filled with so many inspiring stories. And I hope that you guys can draw inspiration because this is the base team. Thank you all for your support. The whole time we couldn't have done it without you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Festus, and uh, thanks again for being here today. What, what an awesome, awesome blessing this is. In fact, even the way that it was set up, we didn't know how it was going to work out, and then uh, you were coming in for the parade tomorrow, and it so just, it just worked out. God knew that the <laughs> Warriors were going to win the championship, <laughs> and then you're here on Sunday, and just so what a blessing. What thank a blessing. you, thank you. God bro. works in mysterious ways, amen. Yeah. So now, Festus, you were born in Nigeria, and the name that you were given at birth, uh, again, I forgive me if I butcher the pronunciation. See. Ifiani? Ifani. Ifani. Can you tell us what that name means and then what it was like growing up in Nigeria? So you all know me as Festus, but when I was born, Festus is actually my dad's name, and I'm junior, but when I was born, my dad named me Festus. But my actual real first name is Ifani because my granddad, his father, had veto power. And so when he walked in, he said, wow, what a nice, real handsome baby. What's his name? He said, Festus. He said, no, 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 we're not doing this again, no. <laughs> so he named me Ifani. And Ifani means nothing is impossible with God. What a great name. Yeah, it, it's interesting because I've read that uh, there's been some research done where they say, Sometimes when somebody uh, ends up doing something that matches with their name, it's not so much a coincidence, but your name has a way of drawing you toward it, like a magnet. And we've seen in your life, nothing is impossible with God. I think my parents set the stage for me my whole life. You know, they always told me, and even in times where I doubt, 
Right? I grew up in a very Christian household. Grandparents were devout Catholics. Parents were devout Catholics. You know, I'm, I'm figuring my way around. I'm not a pastor, so y'all might have to excuse me today. I'm trying to figure it out too. But, you know, I, I always make this joke. If Christianity or if religion was a zero to 10, a one to 10, I'm probably a two. But the point of the story is God uses everybody. It Amen. doesn't matter where you are in your journey. And, I, you know, we're all figuring out yeah. how to find our faith. That's right. Well, we, we've been talking about that. Th that's one of our core values. Cathedral of is, Faith is a place where no one is perfect. And right, if, perfect. if you're perfect and you're here today, then this may not be the place for you. <laughs> because if you're looking for the perfect church, but if you're not perfect, in fact, Look at someone and tell them, God is not finished with me yet. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if the person next to you has no more room to grow, you may want to reach over and check their pulse or reach over and shake their hand because you're sitting next to Jesus because those are the only two options. And so, uh, yeah, we're all on the journey with you. Festus, really. And so now that journey uh, from Nigeria to the United States, I, I was thinking about how kids play, you know, we have a, a kids basketball program here at the church and how um, kids, you know, start playing when they're five and six. Yeah. But your journey into basketball was, was very different. Tell us how that got started. Um, I was born and raised in Nigeria. And um, I don't know how many of you know people from Africa. But I'm going to dispel the stereotypes right now, the myths. We don't throw spears at each other. <laughs> it's not really people running around naked. Actually, some people running around naked. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but we do have streets and roads and technology and all the things. And my parents sent me to the United States because um, opportunity, right? This thing that people take for granted so much here. Is the thing that a lot of people will kill for and a lot of people die for to get the American dream. Mm. So they sent me here to get an education. My uncle is a doctor in Yuba City. Do you guys even know what that is? Yeah. I sure. didn't know where that was before I came here. <laughs> and, you know, because in Nigeria, I only watch TV. And when we see TV, we see New York, we see Chicago, we see Vegas, Miami, Los Angeles. And there is no Yuba City on TV. <laughs> so I didn't know what I, was, what I was signing up for. My uncle was a doctor. My parents sent me away. I was 14 years old, left my family for the first time. And my uncle, you know, everywhere we would go together, people said, oh, he's really tall. Does he play basketball? He's really tall. Does he play basketball? And I didn't play a lick of basketball. I didn't know anything. I didn't know that was a path. I just wanted to go to school. And my uncle decided to sign me up for, for a basketball team. But before he does this, he takes me to a basketball game. And the first game I ever saw was the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Sacramento Kings. My first time seeing the late, great Kobe Bryant. Mm. And it's crazy because during this game, my uncle's looking at me, he says, he's trying to convince me, I don't want to play basketball. I don't know how to dribble. I don't know how to shoot. I don't know anything about this game. So to me, it's like magic when I see people putting the ball between their legs. And he's like, yo, I want you to play basketball. And all I could see, especially when we're sitting in an NBA game, all I could see is how far I had to go. And I'm like, I, I can't do this. No, I, what are you talking about? But he says to me, you never know. Maybe someday you'll be out here on the court someday. Crazy, because we all have a dream, and we say we want to do something. And I don't care what it is, right? You want to go become a doctor. You want to go, whatever the dream is. When you start off, all you see is how far you have to go. All you see is this mountain that you have to climb. And I started on my own journey. And when I started playing the game, you know, I, I played, I tried to play on the high school team. I got cut. They said I wasn't good enough, <laughs> and I don't blame them. I would have cut me, too. I didn't know how, what was going on. I didn't know what, you know, like I told you guys, I can't dribble the ball. It's pretty, you know, you need, to, you need to do that to be able to play basketball. So um, the first basket I ever scored was against my own team. It was just, oh, man, the coach was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and so this is all the stuff. I tell the story this way so you guys understand where I came from. And it was, not, it was not something that I could see in front of me. But I just took it one day at a time. And there's something about just this relentlessness. And I think maybe it comes from where I come from. I come from a third world country. And the idea is you just you have to keep fighting. You have to believe in mm. yourself. And 
long story short, that high school team that I got cut from, nobody played Division I college. Two years later, I had 40 scholarship offers, not 27. Oh. <laughs> 40 scholarship offers. Disinformation. Yeah, I know. 27, 27 were the actual real options that I took. Oh, okay. And okay. It, it's crazy. And I tell this story that way because it's crazy because you look at the people who are in front of you and you say, well, they're already in front of me. But I jumped by every one of them and I didn't even take the path that they took. And so each one of you guys, you have your own journey. And you have no idea what God can do with your story. Ended up going to college. Even when I got there, I still was raw. I, the guys there, everybody now is a four or five star recruit. I didn't play at all my first year. I was a red shirt. Took me three, four years. A couple years in, I'm playing five minutes a game. By my junior year, I'm working my tail off. But, but by the way, sophomore year, I want to quit because I'm like, that's not worth it. I'm a biology major, I'm pre-med, and I'm trying to do practice. I can't do this. Well, by my third year, I'm team captain, most improved player of the year, NBA prospect, all the different things that are associated, all conference, all these things, because I didn't give up. That story doesn't stop there. <laughs> By the way, when I'm telling this story, I'm not telling a story about me. I'm telling you guys a story of what God has done in my life, mm. because this is not by my power. Amen. So I get drafted. I get drafted to the worst team in the NBA. Know what team that is? The Warriors. <laughs> the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. They were the worst team in the NBA. And we had this dream. We were all young kids. This was 10 years ago. To this year, it was 10 years ago. I was drafted with this kid, uh, Draymond Green. You guys know him? <laughs> <laughs> and we all had this dream. Steph Curry was coming off an injury. Clay was still young, trying to learn how to play defense. And we said we wanted to win, we wanted to win a championship. Mm. Like, what are you guys talking about? You just got it. What? <laughs> <laughs> and we made the playoffs for the first time, actually second time in 20 years. And nobody picked us to win. Actually, at the time, we were playing against Andre Iguodala and the Denver Nuggets. Nobody, literally, that whole list of everybody said we were going to lose. Matter of fact, the biggest chance they gave us was to lose in six games. That was our first time understanding that it doesn't matter what anybody says. Because hmm. we beat the Denver Nuggets. And then we got Andre Iguodala from them. <laughs> so that was the start. Now you're looking in 2022. Uh -huh. And these are the champions this year. And you wonder why. Why is Steph breaking down and crying? Well, it's because of the journey. It wasn't really about the championship. It was because when he started mm. off, he was so injured. And then he had to figure it out and become the MVP. And even as the MVP, people still didn't, be still didn't believe in him because he didn't have finals MVP. So along the journey, along the way, I've been able to see all these beautiful stories. And it it's incredible what God can do in your life. But if I ever stopped at the beginning and said, I didn't want to play basketball because people told me it was too late, then I wouldn't have seen college. I won a championship mm. in college. I won a championship in the NBA for crying out loud. Are you kidding me? Yeah. God is amazing. Wow, that's awesome. That was awesome. And it took faith and resilience on your part on not giving up on the dream. And God worked through that and it is amazing to see the journey. Is there a key? Perhaps someone's struggling with giving up right now. Or how do you develop resilience? Is there anything that you learned from your journey that you think could help others in that way? And I want to add one more thing. You said, yeah, sure. you said resilience, perseverance. Yeah. But God put people in my life as mm. well. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm, I did this on my own. There is no way. I had a guy, a random guy came up to me and he said, I'll help you. And this is after he was, he was standing with the basketball coach in the high school. And the basketball, tell, basketball coach tells him, yeah, he's no good. He can't play. I said, what's wrong with him? Can he run? He says, yeah. Can he jump? He's asking the coach. The coach says, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's the problem? The coach said, he can't play basketball. <laughs> and he says, I got him. And he comes up to me and says, yo, I believe in you. And he wants me to play on his summer AAU team. My first basket I ever scored was against my own team. Mm. And when I did that, people are laughing at me. This man comes over to me. He puts his arm around me. 
And he says, listen, I know you want this, and I won't let you quit because I understand what you can be. Eventually, all these people over here are going to be asking you for tickets someday. You wow. got to work through this, and I got you. Yeah. That's what we need as people. We need somebody to believe in us. We need somebody to put these words of faith, yeah. perseverance. Look at all the kids in here. They just want you to believe in them and tell them that they can do it. Because life is like that. Life is going to keep bringing you adversity. It's going to keep bringing you challenges. I told you what my mom said. Yeah. My yeah. mom said to me one day, so the reason why I stopped playing basketball is because a few years ago, I went through a really, really bad injury. And with the injury, I was in the wheelchair for six months. I'm 6'11". Every day I walk around, I'm 6'11". I was in the wheelchair for six months. It's four feet. God literally changed my whole perspective on life. I was just playing in the NBA Finals. Now I can't even go to the bathroom or get food by myself. Mm. I can't imagine. I can't even tell y'all what it is. And I'm sure somebody else is going through their own thing right now where you're like, how? God, why? Why me? I'm angry at God. We're having some long conversations. Me and him were like, oh, I'm cussing at God. Say, no, what the? I'm doing everything you asked me to do. I'm working hard. It's already been hard to get to this point. This is the point where it's supposed to take off. But now I'm going through this again? Why? You know, at that point, you know, I, I tell people all, all the time that he starts trying to make a bargain with God. You're like, man, if you let me get through this, I will go to church <laughs> every day. Right. I will serve there all the go. people. Y'all been, yeah. been through that? Y'all been through that? It's just me? Okay, all right, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, my mom came in one day, and one of these days I just woke up, and I was just crying. I just broke down because... I just couldn't understand it. Everybody I came in with, they're all taken off. They're all signing $100 million deals. And my mom said to me, she said, do you, do you know what it means to be alive? Do you know that par problems are part of being human? I was like, oh, mom, I don't, I don't want to hear this right now. I'm right now. Mm. But she said, no, listen, you know, the only person that doesn't have problems is the man that's six foot under. Mm. And even he wishes he had problems. Problems mean that you're alive. God gave you your mountains so you can show others it can be moved. Well, can I? Yeah, that's... I love that saying. Could you say it again? I'll tell you, make sure, record this. This is an awesome saying to keep close in your, yeah, I mean, keep in your mind and your heart. Mother said, God gave you your mountains so you can show others it can be moved. It means that your mountain is yours. Your journey is yours. You're the person that can climb that mountain. We all look at the mountain and we try to compare our mountains to other people's mountains, try to figure, nah, it's yours. You're the person that can climb it. You're the person that yeah. can de defeat whatever challenge that you're going through. But you can't let go of the rope. You got to keep trusting God, keep believing that he, if he brought you to it, He'll bring you through it. Amen. That's great. That's great. Great wisdom, great encouragement. Um, when you go through something like that, I mean, six months, that's a long time. And when you're in the valley, what I've noticed is you never come out of the valley the way you went into it. Mm -mm. You know, you can get better, you can get bitter. Um, what kind of life lesson did you take away from that you know, that difficulty and that suffering. I'll say something that my dad taught me back then. And he came to me also, and, and shout out to all the fathers in here. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Yeah. My dad said, do you really know what strength is? What, what does it mean to be strong? And I'm thinking, and I told you guys, I have African parents, and so they teach me everything in parables and in stories. And so, do you know what strength is? He said, the man that's strong is the one that can carry the weight when it's the heaviest. That is the strongest man. Mm. You're strong. I know it's heavy. I know it's hard. But you can carry this. And I say that to each one of us. We're all rebuilding. We're all going through something. We just went through a pandemic a couple of years ago. That was hard for everybody. Somewhere from trying to figure out 
how much tissue paper we needed to <laughs> when we can travel again, when we can work, go out without masks, and we're still going through it. But I will say that gratitude has been a big key in my life mm. because when I was sitting in that wheelchair, all I could think about is I couldn't walk. I just want to walk. Every day I'm waking up, everything hurts, back hurts. And I'm sitting here and you're watching, I'm watching games. I'm watching people, the people who are my teammates going on to win championships. And I'm sitting there in the bed and I'm crying, God, what's going on? Why? They were just chanting my name a few months ago. Hmm. All I wanted to do was walk. And then when I started walking, all I wanted to do was run. And then when I was running, all I wanted to do was go play basketball. But then you forget that you're living in the thing that you were praying for. And so every day, with every step that I take now, I'm so happy. And I thank God every day. I thank God all the time now because I understand that there's things that I have right now that I can't buy, money can't buy. There's Amen. people who are under the ground who are praying for your problems right now. So please understand that and live with gratitude. And I'm telling you, you are going to start pulling things to you that you never even thought was possible. That's right. I started thinking about, you know, I was like, man, like I want to play basketball so bad. This is the only thing on my mind. And God showed me another door. I started doing the sports commentary. I didn't even know if this is something I wanted to do. And I started like halfway through the season. They asked me to do it a couple of years ago. I said, no, I don't, I want to play. I started doing it this season. But I didn't realize, I was like, yo, I'm right next to the team. I can influence these guys. I can be a mentor for these young guys. I can go talk to them and give them inspiration. Let them know that, like, yo, that, win, that loss that you had a few weeks ago, that doesn't yeah. mean anything. We're, we're working towards a championship. Mm. So through the season, I've got to understand, that's my way of living in gratitude. I don't know what yours is, but you have your own ways. You have things that God has given you. You know, people always say, when God closes a door, just walk up the hall. There's more doors. <laughs> and this is a door that God opened. And look, we're celebrating a championship. I'm so happy for this team. I'm so happy for these guys. It's nah, incredible. Not fast as... there, there's so much wisdom, and it's almost countercultural uh, because, you know, in our culture, it's so much uh, is thrust at us. It's, it's easy to think about what we don't have Absolutely. instead of being grateful for what we do have. And gratitude is such an important principle. Um, now, you've talked about how basketball has given you a platform of influence. The basketball has been awesome, but now you have a platform of influence where you can mentor younger guys. You've traveled over to Nigeria and done basketball camps. Yeah. You've got a, a web page uh, that's sharing stories. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, like I told you guys, the story is... The, the mantra for this podcast, for this page on Instagram, whatever it is, it's a storytelling platform. And during those times where I felt like I, I couldn't go anymore, I was really struggling, the things that really inspired me were verses on the Bible, stories of other people going through it. I was reading, I was watching documentaries, I was watching movies. I could see the beauty in everybody's journey. And even when I tell you the story of the Golden State Warriors, what do you want me to start? Talking about Clay Thompson and the things that he had to go through for the last two years, how he came back in the middle of the season after missing two seasons with two potentially career-threatening injuries. Coming back in the middle of the season, they say, oh, we need you to play like Klay Thompson so we can go win a championship. Wait, I, I just came, let me figure out how to, I just came back to start playing basketball mm. again. You, you didn't see that part. Oh, Steph came back from, from injury or breaking his hand or whatever it was, the first game of the playoffs. Oh, we need you back so we can go win the championship. Wait, I just, how do we do this? Oh, we need you to come off the bench. Top 10 player in the history of the game. Or Draymond. What, what storyline do you want to hear? In each thing, I think in each story, I've realized that people are battling adversity and getting through it. And everybody, each one of us here. So I want to tell these stories. So I started a podcast. It's called Rebuilding the Beast. And the idea is there's a way for you to overcome. There's a challenge that you're fighting. And when you do get through it, that's going to be somebody else's blueprint to fight their own battle and go through their journey. That perseverance is going to be somebody else's, uh, somebody else's blueprint. So um, we're building the Beast of Page on Instagram. It's a podcast we just started, and, and we just tell stories of different things. I told the story of Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr came from, you know, a background where his dad was, was killed. You saw him 
going, you know, had a very, very deep emotional speech the other day, but you don't understand where that came from. His dad was murdered. And because of that, he doesn't, he, the gun violence thing is something that's personal for him. He poured himself into basketball after, after that whole thing happened. And so he told this story on my podcast, and he told the story of how he only had one scholarship offer, but he put himself into basketball. He poured himself into the game because that was his only form of solace. He was able to make it to the NBA, but each day he was still fighting. Even when he got to the NBA, he was like, I felt like I was going to get cut at any moment. You see him five championships in the NBA, but he was like, I didn't feel like I was good enough. People are struggling with battles that you don't see every day, that you don't mm. understand. And you see them winning. They're winning over these battles. And I hope that you can celebrate a championship like this because there's people like that all over this team. But they also represent what this bay is about, which is perseverance, which is fighting through, which is being good people because they're such an amazing part of this community as well. So I just want to keep telling you stories. I hope it inspires you guys. And that's what this platform is. I know that people follow me because of basketball, because of what I've done and because of what I continue to do. So I want to continue to use that platform for good. And that's what that is, rebuilding the beast. Thank you, guys. Praise God. That's awesome. There's power in story. You know, everybody has a story, and there's power when you share your story. It's a way that God recycles our pain. God never wastes a pain that you go through, but instead he takes it, he redeems it, and then he recycles it and uses it to encourage other people. Yeah. So thank you for doing that through your podcast. And, um, you know, as we wrap things up, uh, is there any other thing you'd like to say to someone that's right now they're just in a difficult place. Uh, they're at that point where maybe when you were in the wheelchair and it just, you know, you're in tears and, and they've somehow made it to church today. Um, anything you would say to them, Festus, as we wrap things up and, and we'd like to pray for you, but before that, just anything at all. There's a, there's a story I told earlier and I'll, I'll tell you guys again. The story was of a man, he owned a, he owned this prized horse, and this horse one day breaks out of the barn and runs away, runs into the wild. And everybody comes to him and says, I'm so sorry, you lost your horse. He says, I will see. After a while later, the horse runs back. When it comes back, it comes back with a bunch of wild horses back into the barn. And people are like congratulating him. Oh, my God, you're rich now. He said, oh, we'll see. And one day, this man's son was trying, to, was trying to take care of the horse. He falls off the horse, breaks his arm and his leg. And people are like, wow, that, that, horse, is, that, that horse is cursed. The man says, no, we'll see. The army tried to recruit this, this son to go into war. And that's where everybody would die in this war. When they tried to recruit him, they couldn't because he was handicapped at this point. And people said, what good fortune it is for your son. The man says, I don't know, we'll see. Because the idea is, life is a wave. It goes up and down. And if you go up and down with it, you'll, you'll get seasick. There's no way. But you understand that good things will come to those who wait, and this too shall pass. And if you live like that, you understand that you can stay steady. But really what that is, is living, put first, put the, put the word first, put God first. Understanding and trusting in God, knowing that he will never bring you to something that he won't Amen. bring you to. Amen. My dad used to put it this way, who can say it's a bad day until all the days have been added up? Ooh -wee. And Proverbs 3 says, you know, put God first. In all things, put God first. He will direct you, and he will crown your efforts with success. Amen. And Festus and I would like to pray with you. If you bow your heads for just a moment, if you'd say, you know, Pastor Ken, I, I, I've heard about Jesus. I know about Jesus. I'm in church today but I've never really stepped across the line to become a follower of Jesus. And that's a decision you make. All of us are on the journey, but every journey starts with a step. And today you'd like to step across the line and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and become his followers. Or anybody who'd say, Pastor Ken, that's me. Just lift up your hand real high, wherever you're at on campus. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. Up in the balcony, you'd say, hey, Pastor Ken, that's me out in the amphitheater. Now, let me ask another question. Maybe you're one of those who are going through a very, very difficult time right now. And you could use some prayer. 
You know, here's a place, cathedral's a place where we can be authentic with each other. All of us go through struggles. And you're going through one of those struggles right now and you could use some prayer. Would you lift up your hand real high and say, that's me. I'm gonna invite you to take one more step. It's a step of faith. Would you go ahead and stand right where you're at? Those who are struggling and need, could use some prayer. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your humility. We're all on the journey together. We're with you, we're for you. If you're near somebody who's standing, I encourage you to go and you could pray with them. Just extend your hand toward them. And Festus and I, we wanna reach out our hands and pray for you. Father, I thank you that you're a good God. Even when life is hard, God is still good. And I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would move in this place, wherever people are, are at in this moment, in the building, outside the building, in the parking lot, online. Holy Spirit, move deeply within their hearts and their minds. We've heard encouraging words. God, I pray that you would take those words and your Holy Spirit would use those words to energize hearts and minds, that you would breathe strength and courage and you would let them know that they will be victorious, that they can overcome, that nothing is impossible with God. Let them know that today, oh God. If they just stay in the race, you will make sure they win. We believe that, we declare it, we own it today. In Jesus' name, for Jesus' glory, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. amen, amen. Let's give God praise, amen, hallelujah. Amen. Everyone stand with me, please. Just a couple of things before I dismiss you. First of all, I wanna thank, oh yeah, we do have a basketball. So I have a basketball here to hand out. And Festus was so gracious to sign this basketball. It is Father's Day. And so I wanna give it to one of the dads in the audience right over here. Here's an awesome dad who's a part of our cathedral family. Happy Father's Day, Vic. God bless you guys. Amen. And then will you let Festus know how much you appreciate him sharing his journey with us today. Oh, blessings. Love you, buddy. Hey, oh, man. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Right, one more time before we go. Everybody say Warriors! Warriors! I'll see you guys in the parade tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, buddy. If you need prayer, we'll be at the amphitheater to pray with you and pray for you. And then don't forget, Anybody who signs up for the Stars and Stripes race today, it's Father's Day, you get dad root beer along with a cookie. So I've got mine. It balances out the running, amen. So it all works out. We're gonna speak God's blessing over you as you go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine brightly upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. All God's people said, amen. 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 God bless you as you go.